Midnight Sunday School. Don't know if you can hear me, but the music's going on. Right now we're doing our drive through Noah's Ark. Here are some of the cars that are lined up. We're getting ready for bingo. And this is what it looks like. So you know what? Welcome. Today is Sunday School video, uh, Sunday School worship. And let's get started with some praise. So let's praise God with all of our hearts. Let's get started. All right, Sunday School. So we're going to sing a song called King Jesus is All. Uh, it's a pretty old song and we're going to do something called call and response. What that means is I'm going to sing the first line and you guys are going to respond. So for example, the first line goes, King Jesus is all, King Jesus is all, my all in all, my all in all. Yeah, so you guys get the example. Thank you, Pastor Josh, for being a great sport, as always. Um, so... The first verse, I'll sing the first line. I want you to sing really loud at your home. Um, repeat after me. And in the chorus, we're going to sing all together. But there are things that we do as a response. It's not an echo. Um, but um, I'll put in the lyrics. So I want you to yell those out. I'll uh, record my voice on top of this so that we can get that as well. All right, let's get started. Let's all clap our hands and sing with all of our hearts.
All right, before we get into the message today, here's a short、uh, video of how our Noah's Ark drive through was yesterday. Sunday school, so welcome back and welcome to our online worship service. We just ended our very first Noah's Ark drive through. So, if you were here, it was such a great pleasure to meet all of you. A lot of you have grown up, and to our winners, congratulations! All right, we played bingo, and I used a lot of my voice, so I'm gonna try to get through this. But you know, if you did come, you got one of these bags. I hope you enjoy everything that's in there. And this year, we also、uh, put in what we're gonna call a Cornerstone Online Trading Card. And this one's of、uh, Fred and his doof nut. I don't know which one you got, but we have、uh, I would say over 20 different kinds. And here are a few of them. I'll put them on the screen. So I don't know which one you got, but I hope you're happy with the cards that you did get. Now, you know we also had a Starburst challenge. How many Starbursts are in this? I do have the winner right here. You know, and a lot of you have guessed. Some of you came very close, but I'm gonna announce the winner at the very end of our video before the Lord's Prayer. So with that, before we start our message today, let's all bow our heads, let's close our eyes, and let's start、uh, with a word of prayer. Let's pray together. So God, I just want to thank you for who you are. Thank you for allowing me to meet a lot of my Sunday school brothers and sisters today.、Um, it was such a pleasure to meet them. God, help us to learn more about you. Help us to draw closer to you. Help us to live our lives to put a smile on your face. So God, be with our church. Be with all of our families. Keep everyone safe. Be with Moksai and Samani God over their health and Lord over their、uh, spiritual well-being as well. We love you. We thank you. And in Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. All right. So today's passage comes from the book of Jeremiah. Now, yesterday we ended the book of Jeremiah in our quiet time. Today, what date is it, everyone? It's November first. It's a new month. And、we only have two more months in the year 2020 before it's the year 2021. Now we ended the book of Jeremiah, and now starting from today, in quiet time, we start the book of First Thessalonians, which is a book, a letter that was written to the、uh, people of Thessalonica by Apostle Paul. We're going to learn more about that next week. Today, I want to conclude for us the book of Jeremiah, because we've been on this book for a long time. I've been really blessed by this book, and I hope you have been as well. Now we learned that Jeremiah is a prophet. And what does a prophet do? Prophet is someone who speaks the word of the Lord, 
uh, the, God speaks to the prophet, the prophet takes the message out to the people. Now at the very end of the book of Jeremiah, in chapter 52, we have a pretty much conclusion, and we have a retelling of the story of what came to be. I want to focus on the last four verses of this book. So let's open up to Jeremiah chapter 52, verse 31 to 34. It's going to appear on your screen right here. This is the word of the Lord. And in the 37th year of the exile of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, in the 12th month, on the 25th day of the month, evil Merodach, king of Babylon, in the year that he began to reign, graciously freed Jehoiakim, king of Judah, and brought him out of prison. And he spoke kindly to him and gave him a seat above the seats of the kings who were with him in Babylon. So Jehoiakim put off his prison garments, and every day of his life he dined regularly at the king's table. And for his allowance, a regular allowance was given him by the king according to his daily needs, until the day of his death, as long as he lived. Amen. All right, so I don't know, Sunday school, if you remember who Jehoiakim was. He was the last king of Judah. So Jeremiah was a prophet in the kingdom of Judah. Now, Judah, remember, it was of the line of King David. King David was part of Judah. In the Bible, in the book of 1 Chronicles, God promises David an amazing promise. King David wanted to make a temple for God, and he, he talks about this to God, but God sends a prophet, not Jeremiah, a different prophet during the time of King David, named Nathan. And Nathan responds to King David, telling him, no, you're not going to be able to create the temple, your son Solomon will, but God makes a wonderful promise to King David, and that's in 1 Chronicles chapter 17, verse 11 through 15. And in that promise, this is what God says. When your days are fulfilled to walk with your fathers, I will raise up your offspring after you, one of your own sons, and I will establish his kingdom. He shall build a house for me, and I will establish his throne forever. I will be to him a father, and he shall be to me a son. I will not take my steadfast love from him, from him as I took it from him who was before you, but I will confirm him in my house and in my kingdom forever, and his throne shall be established forever. Amen. Now, what is this promise? God is pretty much promising here in the book of 1 Chronicles to King David that the Messiah, that Jesus, will be born through King David's line. So King, King David will become Jesus' great, 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 I don't know how many great, but grandpa. Does that make sense, everyone? So that's the promise that God is giving David. What an amazing promise. That through King David's line, the king of all kings, God himself, God come down as man, will be born through the line of Judah. As we know, Jesus' mother was Mary. Mary was of the line of Judah, of King David. So God's promises come to pass. Wow. I don't know if you just heard that motorcycle. I'll be right back. I'm going to close the window real quick. So where were we? That's right. King David was, uh, Jesus was of the line of King David. And that's amazing. What an amazing promise. Now, what does that have to do with today's passage in the book of Jeremiah? Remember, Judah now is destroyed. King David's sons and his son's sons and you know his great-grandkids, they were all kings of Judah. Solomon was King David's son, so on and so forth. But now the kingdom of Judah is ruined. What's going to happen to this promise? Sunday school, I want you to remember that God always keeps His promises. If God makes a promise to you in Scripture, it will come to pass. Why? Because that's who God is. God is a promise keeper. We don't know how long it will take, but God always, always keeps His promises. I don't know about you, but you know, I try to be as honest as I can be. If I make a promise to someone, I try my best to fulfill that promise. But I'm human. I'm not perfect. Unfortunately, I break my promises sometimes. And if I've ever broken a promise with any of you, I'm sorry. 
But there's someone who never ever breaks his promises, and that's God. And here we have, at the end of the book of Jeremiah, even though Judah was destroyed. You see, when kingdoms destroyed other kingdoms, usually they would also get rid of all the kings. For some reason, King Nebuchadnezzar kept Jehoiakim, the last king of Judah, alive. And at the end of the book of Jeremiah, it tells us that the king after Nebuchadnezzar, he kept, he kept Jehoiakim alive. Not just he kept him alive, he freed him from prison and he let him live a fairly comfortable life. What does this tell us? That God's promise to King David is continuing on. God does not allow Jehoiakim um, to pass away, to be destroyed, because only by keeping Jehoiakim alive so that Jehoiakim can have a family and have kids can the promise come to pass. So remember, Sunday school, God always, always keeps His promises. And what great news is that? Because ultimately, why does God make this promise to King David? That King, through King David, Jesus will be born. So through King David and also through uh, King Jehoiakim, who was King David's offspring, like his, his part of his family line, we have eventually the birth of Jesus Christ. And to us, this is very important. Because God made this promise, he promised this Messiah that will come and make a new covenant, come and save us from our sins, come and allow us to live an amazing life. And that promise can only come to pass if He keeps the line of David alive, and God does. And because of that, Jesus is born on this earth over 2,000 years ago. And as Jesus was born, we, we know the story. We read the Gospels and we talk about it in Sunday school a lot because it's so important. Jesus walked on this earth 100% God, 100% human. He lived a perfect life. He never ever sinned. He never did anything, said anything, or thought anything that displeased God. He always put a smile on God's face. Yet God chose, Jesus chose to die on the cross for you and I. Jesus chose to take your sins and my sins, even though He never committed a sin. And all of our sin, for those of us who believe in Jesus, our sins were pushed to Jesus, and when He hung on the cross, He took your sin with it. But praise be to God, He did not stay dead. In three days, He rose again, and what does this represent? Jesus not only took our sin, He was victorious over sin. The, the consequences of sin, which is death, could not hold Jesus. Jesus was more powerful. He rose again, and now He shares that victory with you and I. So if you believe in Jesus, if you believe in Jesus as your Lord and personal Savior, if you believe that He died on the cross for your sins, and you rose again victorious, guess what? You are saved. You are God's sons and daughters. And there are so many promises in Scripture that God gives to us as sons and daughters. Amazing promises. And we're going to talk about that more through the Sunday School videos. And we've already been talking about that. But Sunday School, just like we learned today, take heart. Because guess what? God always, always keeps His promises. He's going to keep His promise to you. He's going to keep His promise to me. And I am so excited. So no matter how difficult times may be, no matter how hard, uh, no matter what I may be going through in life, guess what? I can always have joy. I can always be comforted. I can always have hope. Why? Because I know God's promises will come to pass. I know who I serve. I know who I belong to. I know whose son I am. I am the son of God. And just as I learned through Jeremiah, I've learned how much God loves me. I've learned how much God keeps His promises. i learned how much God's Word never changes. So Sunday School, what should we do? How should we respond? You know, if you want to learn more about the promises that God makes to us, and these amazing, wonderful promises, guess what? You need to read the Scripture. You need to read the Bible. Because the Bible tells us and contains the mysteries and promises of God in our life. So I want you to really read God's Word. Spend time and quiet time more and more. We're going to be in the book of 1 Thessalonians this week. 
And like I said, it's a letter written by Apostle Paul, and it's going to be amazing. And after that, we're going to jump back to the book of Daniel. But God has given us amazing, amazing promises. We have so much to look forward to. We have heaven. But most importantly, we have Jesus. We have the presence of God, the Holy Spirit living in us. What amazing promises these are. And I want you to experience it to the fullest. So learn more about God's promises and the best way to do that. Read the Word. Read the Bible. You know, spend more time reading the Bible. Uh, spend time doing your quiet time. Keep praying at 1124. You know, if you came out, one of the bingo words was pray 1124. I hope you're keeping that up, Sunday School. I'm doing my best to keep it up as well. And you know, if you pray at 1124, and I'm praying at 1124, and other members are praying at 1124, how awesome is that? There's a time every single day where all of our church members, with one heart, we're praying to God together. There's power in prayer. But remember, 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 God always, always, always keeps His promises. And what amazing news that is. Because I don't know about you, you know, like, there's so many things in this world that may seem good, but they're not. Ultimately, I put my trust and my hope in Jesus Christ, in God the Father. So Sunday School, I hope this message encourages you. And once again, to everyone who showed up, it was so great seeing each and every one of you. And you know what? We're gonna hope, Hopefully, we we'll can see you soon. But like I said, um, we're praying for you, and we miss you. All right, let's pray together, and we'll bring the message portion of our video to a close. Let's pray. So God, we just want to thank you, for you are the promise keeper. You always keep your promises. You never change, God. So we just want to thank you. Help us to learn more about your promises by reading your word. We love you. We thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, before we close today's video, like I promised, we have to announce the winner. Now, before I announce the winner, you know, we've had, uh, let's see, how many answers did we have? We had about 46 people guess how many Starbursts are in here. Now, no one got it exactly right, but we found someone who came very, very close. Now, I only counted Sunday school students for this, okay? So, um, if you're in junior high and you're here and you guess, I'm sorry. I'm going to give this to the Sunday school students. Now, Teacher Doug prepared this for us. And if you win, you can come pick this up at church, okay? This, this, there's a lot of Starbursts in here. You can keep this container. I really like this container. It's an airtight container. You can lock it like this as well. It's a pretty cool container. And we're going to give you the gift card to Amazon. I think I have it right here. Yes, I'm going to cover the code, but I can show you the gift card really quick. So, if you win, please email me right here. And let's talk about how you want to pick this up. But actually, I know who's won already, so I can give it to your dad on Wednesday or Sunday to get it to you. And our winner, everyone, drum roll. If you're at home, let's... Drum roll, the winner is Claire. So Claire, congratulations on winning this container and Star Starburst as well as this Amazon gift card. Now, how many Starbursts were in this is in this container, you ask? The correct answer is 389 Starbursts. 389 Starbursts. And Claire came closest by guessing that there are 353. So congratulations, Claire. You know, I will give this to your, to your dad tomorrow at church with the Amazon gift card, and he'll get this to you at your home. So we're, we're, we're happy for you. And, you know, to everyone who participated, thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, so with that, you know, once again, God is a promise keeper, and it's amazing because he's our father. He loves you very much. If you want to learn more about his promises, read God's word. Spend time reading God's word. Um, and he loves it when you do. He loves it when you spend time with him. So with that Sunday school, let's all bow our heads. Let's close our eyes and we're going to end in the Lord's prayer. Let's pray together. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done 
on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. All right, Sunday School. Bye. Thank you.